brother Anthony. I joined the monastery in 1965, having come to school here in 1959. The abbey then had lots of trees, but having been in the monastery for about 10 or 20 years, I did notice, and many of us noticed, that the high forest was disappearing very rapidly. Underneath there was a canopy, a sub-canopy of laurel and rhododendron, and the trees were not replacing themselves. And there were continued losses from wind throw or from felling for uh, use in the sawmill. And I did ask to be allowed to work on the regeneration, which my brethren very courageously allowed. So I've been uh, working in the forest really for the last, um, since 1984, for the last 30 or 40 years. I think it is a very harmonious thing. The trees of the wood shout for joy, so together with the psalmody, we have the resonance of nature joining us in our praise of God and our search for truth. The individual monk or the individual person seeking God can look to his big brothers and sisters, the trees, as an illustration of what the task is about. So just like a microscope can show in detail what is inside someone, similarly a projection can. And the trees, which are much bigger than us, illustrate for us very impressively and um, convincingly the deep, hidden, inner treasures of our buried selves. So they show us how to live with Adoita, non-duality. They live in harmony with the forest. They live and die carelessly. Uh, when they approach death, they make sure that the young are taking over from them. And they protect each other. And very often the roots, if they meet good earth, with the, all the fungi, the mycorrhiza, the, those fibrous threads are like fibro optics which communicate between one tree and another. And these, these mycorrhiza introduce the trees to each other so that if you fell one tree very often, the stump heals over like a branch which has been cut from the tree. So you, you cut into a biogroup. By felling that one tree, you've cut into a biogroup and all the trees gather round and save the stump of the tree. And the stump, of course, dedicates itself, dedicates its root system to helping the other trees as well. The forest is usually a very still and peaceful place and very restorative. Unfortunately, at the moment, uh, we have a little bit of improvement work going on and Thardini Egreben a Karagraka, they are tearing at the rocks with these gigantic mechanical elephants but um, apart from that minor disturbance in the background, there is generally peace and harmony. In fact, in the forest, it's not merely silence. There is a silent symphony. There's a symphony going on of thousands of creatures and thousands of plants growing away in this wonderful harmony. With some minor responsibility for the development of the woods, I sometimes get busy and worried how will that tree do and how will the other tree do and what's going to come of the, become, of the, become of it all. And then I suddenly realize that there is a whole symphony which includes the human population living by and within the forest. And um, this will move on at, at its own pace and in original ways and ways much more wonderful than one, than one can devise or imagine. You see, the trees are very brave. If they are stripped of foliage and damaged by storms, they live away. They um, open their arms to God and open their arms to the light and pray. They, they are a good model of the Oran's gesture of limbs outstretched to the heavens. And they do point to us the way towards the heavens. I'm sure in olden days, their, their infinite tracery was used to map out the stars, because you can teach people which star is which very easily if you have a standing tree, especially a deciduous tree in winter. Which brings us on to another subject, deciduous trees and evergreen trees. We in Denstall are blessed with many wonderful trees, particularly conifers, evergreen conifers, 
not all conifers are evergreen. The larch, the great boat, boat building tree, is deciduous. But we have lots of conifers which are evergreen, mainly from North America. And these great botanical wonders of the wild have been joined in recent times by a great collection brought to us by the Botanical Gardens in Edinburgh of uh, coniferous trees which have been dropped carelessly by nature in remote spots like the South Islands of the Pacific and they have been rescued and brought to us here for ex situ conservation. The conifers are almost crystalline. They are a more primitive tree than the deciduous and the, than the broadleaf trees. They seem to still express the harmony and the geometry of crystals and um, having uh, come fr from minerals and having come from early um, inorganic life. There are only 800 species left in the wild, 800 species of conifers approximately, while we have 60,000 broadleaves. So uh, many of these conifers are threatened with extinction and we are doing one little, little bit in cooperating with the conifer conservation program funded by Sainsbury's, better be said, um, to keep them alive on the planet. It's wonderful how trees introduce us not only to the depths of the earth and to the heights of the heavens, but also introduce us to the past because they're a very dynamic population and they have moved a lot. In, in Northwestern Europe, we had the environmental disaster called the Ice Age and um, that lamentable event wiped out most of our trees. So we do have to bring them in. We did bring in the oak about 8,000 years ago from Spain, and um, no other animal would have headed north with these precious acorns into the teeth of advancing winter. And we similarly have uh, filled the gap between America and China with magnolias and other American and Chinese and Japanese trees, replacing the losses of the glacial period. The privilege of working in the woods has in fact been immense and um, many friends have helped us and advised us. So the trees constitute a community with great continuity and they have had their attendant humans with them over the years. The Barringtons planted over a million trees. Over the generations <clears throat> the monks have always looked kindly on the trees uh, Father Placid tells me that Father Gerard Francois and Father Gisbert used to walk through the woods and he would hear them excitedly say, Ah, encore un, pe un petit arbre. In subsequent times, we've had Father Oliver, who did amazing planting. So the whole forest really is, to some extent, a celebration of creation, with representatives of habitats from all over the world and representatives from different areas come here today.